as I was praying with our gospel passage, I had come to mind a story of a young man that I knew. As he was growing up, he wasn't raised in any particular faith and didn't exactly even believe in God. But as a grown man, he was working and for a period of time he had to commute to work and he was with a friend of his who happened to be Catholic. And that friend and he would often talk on the way to work and on the way back from work and he started to take an interest in Catholicism. He decided he was going to become Catholic and he went through RCIA with his friend as his sponsor. When it came time for him to be baptized, he received all the graces that come from baptism, sanctifying grace, faith, hope, charity, and so much more. But he also received what he considered an extraordinary kind of healing when he, had bapti- when he was baptized. Since college, his college years, he had struggled with a particular kind of difficulty. He, he had a disordered relationship with alcohol. And when he converted, when he was baptized, he was miraculously healed of that, such that he no longer had that disordered desire for alcohol. And so although that's not exactly the same kind of miraculous healings that we heard about in our gospel passage, we can see that God is still at work bringing about healing in people's lives. In our gospel passage, we hear about how Jesus was coming to heal this little girl who was sick. And on the way, he ended up healing also this woman who was suffering from hemorrhages. She had tremendous faith seeking out his assistance. She heard of him and believed that he would be capable of bringing her the healing she desired. So she touched the hem of his garment and was healed. Jesus continued his healing streak as he went to what was believed to be by many people, a a little girl who had passed away. And although she actually did die, Jesus said she was just sleeping and raised her from the dead. A miraculous kind of healing, a healing from physical death. And he did that out of love for her. But these miraculous kinds of healings, these physical kinds of healings, these emotional kind of healings, psychological kind of healings, as great as they are in themselves, there's something even greater that Jesus is using these to point towards, and that's the healing of the soul. That's the pursuit of holiness. Humanity had fallen astray from God through sin, and God wants to bring all of us his healing grace. Sometimes he does it in this extraordinary way, so that we can be confident that he is at work, so that we are aware of his presence, so that we can grow in our faith, our hope, and our love in God, so that any woundedness we might have related to those things may be healed, so that our relationship with God can be healed. Yes, there is death in this world, but that was not part of God's original plan. We see that in our first reading. God wants us to cooperate with his grace so that we can be with him forever in heaven. And so everything that God does in our lives here on earth is to direct us towards heaven, to encourage us to choose to receive that grace, to encourage us to cooperate with that grace on that journey. Because God wants us to be with him forever. But he's not going to force us into heaven. He's going to invite us. He's going to encourage. He's going to inspire, but not require. And so miraculous healings, extraordinary healings, are for the sake of that journey towards heaven, that healing of the soul, which is so much more important than the healing of the body. But it's so much easier to see the healing of the body, to recognize the healing of the body, more difficult to see the inner workings of the soul or how God has brought healing to a person's life with regards to their soul. But God does want to heal all of us, so much so that God the Son was willing to come down from heaven, take on a human nature, and die on the cross 
to reveal his love, to make a gift of himself to God the Father, to make up for all of the sins of all of humanity for all time. God loved us so much that he was willing to undergo all of that, to reveal his love and to give us his grace to be healed, to continue that journey towards heaven. Now, ordinarily, God doesn't use extraordinary means. He uses ordinary means to bring about healing, the pursuit of virtue. We may find ourselves constantly falling into the same sins, and we might wonder, well, why can't God just, you know, pow, heal me of it? Well, he can, and sometimes he does. But usually he wants us to cooperate with his grace through ordinary ways, the small little incremental gradual growth, a gradual kind of healing. Sometimes we may have an affliction and God wants to heal us, but he wants to heal us through other people so that he can heal multiple people simultaneously. The person who has the affliction and the one who is offering the assistance. And then together, through each other, God can bring healing. God wants to bring healing to all of us. Sometimes he wants to heal us of our pride, such that we have to humble ourselves before another person and ask for assistance, whatever kind of assistance that may be. Maybe with a physical ailment, maybe with a particular kind of sin, maybe with moving to another parish. <laughs> God wants to bring all of us healing. And that healing of the soul is most important to him. The healing of the body, he'll do that sometimes for the sake of the healing of the soul. And that healing of the soul is so important, he gives us the sacraments to be that primary way of healing our souls. There's a spiritual kind of resurrection that takes place in the confessional when someone who has committed mortal sin wants to be alive spiritually again. A miracle happens in, in those kinds of confessions. A person whose spiritual life is dead comes back to life again. God wishes to nourish us on our journey, to strengthen us, and he gives us spiritual food, his very self, in the Eucharist to bring us healing of our small afflictions, sins, to help in that incremental spiritual growth and holiness. God wants to bring us all healing. And I hope that during my four years here that I was a good instrument of healing for many of you here at Ascension. I noticed even in myself as I was reflecting upon this theme of healing that there's been that kind of gradual, ordinary kind of healing in my own life. For example, I remember when I first came here, I was kind of very nervous when celebrating the Mass, and even when it came to homilies, I would have the whole thing written out. And so I went from like having three pages, word for word, to just one sticky note. <laughs> God wishes to bring healing to all of us, his healing grace, his loving power. And it's for us to welcome that grace, to seek out that healing. Usually it's through these ordinary, incremental, gradual process of growing in holiness in the pursuit of virtue. So let us take a moment now, and perhaps a little bit each day this week, to reflect upon the healing that we desire, to reflect upon the healing we've received, and to be open to all the grace God wishes to give us. Let us have that reflection even now as we prepare to receive another little incremental healing with the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ himself in the most holy Eucharist. <laughs> 